They're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Will you be ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the finale of Traumathon 2. It's been a long time coming. Lots of promises were broken, but many more were fulfilled. This time around, I felt like it was only necessary to end off the month of trauma with something more uplifting, and maybe even wholesome. I'm of course talking about The Addams Family, a movie I've been watching every year on Halloween for the past six years. It's also a film I've considered to be possibly the perfect Halloween film, But how could that be possible when it's not even about Halloween? Well, why don't we go ahead and dive a bit deeper in order to understand. See, back in 1938, American cartoonist Charles Adams felt kind of bored with the average nuclear family at the time. The idealistic family of, oh, one boy, one girl, a husband with the perfect job, and the wife who never complains. Well, screw that shit. How about we turn all that shit upside down? And so that's what he did with the Adams family, making them out to be a very grotesque family who were fascinated, if not excited, by all things macabre and icky. Interestingly enough, however, they didn't start out as a family, just individual characters who happened to hang around each other. The first time they were ever seen was with Morticia and Gomez and the salesman trying to sell them a vacuum to their desolate, horrible home. These group of characters were known as Adams' ghoulish family, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the entire character lineup was a family, just that they belonged to Charles Adams, which, by the way, I gotta mention, this dude was super gothic. Like, gothism didn't really exist back in the 1930s or the 40s, but if you see his drawings, I mean, the dude is so classically dark and gothic, it is so beautiful. Like, his drawings are magnificent, and he even drew, like, gravestones and and tombstones just for fun. Honestly, he was a dark dude, and he loved everything macabre, and so it's only fitting that he made the Addams Family. The dude who was into the dark occult stuff was also the guy who made the Addams Family? Sure, I would not have seen him any different. But who were the Addams Family? They weren't a necessarily evil family, though their tricks may sometimes go too far. They were just a loving, caring family who sees things that are deadly, wicked, and evil as something to be fascinated and loved. Morticia was the matriarch of the family, very quiet, very reserved, kind, soft-spoken, but wicked and ghoulish all the same. Gomez was the patriarch, eccentric, deadly, always finds ways to entertain himself and the family, even if it endangers them, which they were very much enjoyed. Pugsley and Wednesday Adams were the son and daughter respectively, very rarely seen apart, always playing with their deadly toys, sometimes just straight up being weapons, and playing games together where Pugsley acts as the crash test dummy to all of Wednesday's devilish plots. Uncle Fester is the twisted, demented uncle that's always seen taking things to the extreme, being a massive masochist and always destroying stuff in himself in the process. Grandmama is a occultist witch who constantly brews potions, casting hexes, cursing everyone just for the fun of it. And then of course we have Lurch and Thing, the butler and handservant to the Adams family, both very loyal if not a bit creepy. But that's okay. That's part of the reason why the Addams Family loves them. The Addams Family, since the very start of their creation, challenged the norms of how we see the average American household. I mean, it's such a fantasy to think that every American home was just like the ideal nuclear family, which is seldom ever true. That's not to say most families are unhappy or miserable, it's just that most families can be happy without having most of the things that are quote unquote normal that a family should have. That's what the Adams family defied. They lived in a rundown, dirty, cobwebbed home, but they loved it and saw the cobwebs as decor and the creaky floors as charming. They were vicious, cruel, and violent towards one another, but 
That's not a bad thing, that's just part of the fun to them. They weren't a conventionally beautiful family. The Adams clan comes in all shapes and sizes. Cousin It is a blob of hair for Christ's sake, and they still love the guy despite that. And I think for that reason, the Adams family is, in many ways, the most wholesome cartoon family ever made. They're not at all dysfunctional. There's rarely ever a time they have conflict with one another. Pugsley and Wednesday, despite being little demon kids, are very respectful to their mom and dad. Gomez and Morticia also aren't horrible people either. They treat their guests and friends well. They're not all that selfish at all. It's also funny to realize that Gomez and Morticia legitimately love each other. Like, they cannot live without each other, literally. Every opportunity they get, they make out, hold one another, kiss each other, and they just don't care where they show their love. They're proud and happy to be in love with each other, and they don't mind people seeing that. And I say that's a funny thing, because you gotta keep in mind that the Adams Family is supposed to be an upside down, opposite day version of the contemporary perfect American household. So this means that in most nuclear families, showing affection to your spouse was just something people didn't really do. Which is probably true, considering how conservative and Christian Americans were back in the 40s. Now, with all that being said, the Adams Family, of course, found its success among the American audience. So much so, it even affected the way people viewed the creator Charles Adams. Seriously, people actually thought that he was portraying himself in his own comics. Like, that's what his family actually was like. There were rumors that he slept in a coffin, that he had a guillotine in his house, that he received a straight jacket as a birthday gift and proudly wore it, that his own fans chopped up their fingers and sent it to him via mail. There were so many crazy stories about him. And then there was even one that's particularly famous where he apparently went crazy and drew this one comic of a ghoul that visited a maternity ward and, as it loomed over the babies, it told the nurse, don't bother wrapping it, I'll lead it here. This never happened, but due to his fascination with the macabre and his wonderful yet creepy art style, which is absolutely beautiful, but totally dreary. I, I love it though, it's wonderful. People just assumed that he was that crazy. Keep in mind, that kind of humor back in the day would have been incredibly shocking, and I'm of course referring to the whole ghoul in the maternity ward comic. A monster eating babies? I mean, that's just incredibly shocking, and at worst, it was incredibly taboo, but it never really happened. Years later, and the Adams family, while still one of the more unconventional families out there, is definitely not the more controversial. Yet, with success like theirs, it was only a matter of time that, after many cartoons, TV shows, and comics, there'd be a movie. The Addams Family. Oh boy, what a wonderful film. By God, does it just capture the absolute wonderful energy and chilling vibe of Halloween, and with the important family values as well. The film features possibly one of the best, if not the best casting for the Addams Family ever portrayed. Angelica Houston perfectly captures Morticia's beauty and wit, while also portraying her reserved, yet wicked nature. I love how her eyes are always highlighted, a somewhat tribute to Bela Lugosi's Dracula portrayal where his eyes were always visible even in the shadows. Raul Julia has seemingly infinite energy when it comes to portraying Gomez, and I gotta say, no one, and I mean no one, has ever portrayed Gomez as perfectly as Raul. He's just such a master of charisma, and he steals the spotlight any chance he gets. Rest in peace, man. You were wonderful. And of course, Christopher Lloyd is Uncle Fester, and by God, what a weird role to see him as. It's like my brain wants to recognize him as Christopher Lloyd, but the way he plays Fester makes it almost seem like he is Fester, not Christopher Lloyd. Seemingly always holding back, tensing up, always having this sort of devilish look on his face, like he's hatching something in his brain. He's just loving it. I mean, he has this role in the bag. I would talk more about the rest, but they have have a much smaller role in the film by comparison, and even in the sequel, they're not really that important. Wednesday kind of glows up, but not really by that much. Regardless, they played these roles really well, and future renditions of the characters never really felt the same. I mean, did you know that there was also a rendition of the family where Gomez was played by Tim Curry? 
and this little kid who played Pugsley grew up to be the fedora guy? I'm not fucking kidding, that's him. That is hilarious. It's a fun little piece of trivia. But I really just didn't like the other portrayals that the Adams Family soon had. It's not really my style, and I think it was done way better in the movie. But I am getting a little bit off track here. Let's talk about the film itself. The plot of this movie revolves around the Adams Family. Duh. But they owe some sort of money or some sort of issue they have with this loan shark asshole that gypped them. Meanwhile, Gomez is lamenting the fact that his brother, Uncle Fester, has gone missing for 25 years after the two had a falling out with one another. I gotta be honest, as much as I love this movie, the main plot of the loan sharks or whatever was always my least favorite part. I hardly pay attention when they're around, and I don't say this too often, but that crazy mom character character is an absolute bitch. Seriously, if you had manipulative parents, then this chick will infuriate you to no end. I was actually much more interested in the family themselves. After all, they are the main focus. The main bitch, named Abigail Craven, finds an opportunity to use her son Gordon to infiltrate the Adams family home in order to steal their riches and treasures alongside any other valuables. After Tully, the Adams family lawyer, sees a resemblance in both Gordon and the long lost Uncle Fester, and so Gordon awkwardly transitions into Fester, matching Fester down to the very wrinkle. Soon after introducing him back to the family, Gomez is ecstatic and eagerly reintroduces him back into the family. It's almost like he was actually missing for like two months instead of 25 years. They pretend like nothing really happens. I mean, the chemistry Lloyd and Raul bring with each character, I mean, it almost makes you feel like they really do have a lost, estranged connection with one another. It's fun funny because everyone except Gomez has some sort of suspicion over Uncle Fester, so he pretty much brutalizes Fester any way he can, thinking naively that he is Uncle Fester, not knowing what's really going on and that this is another man. But, I mean, technically in the ending, it's revealed that it really is Uncle Fester, but that doesn't really matter. At this point, he doesn't even know that. Yet, despite all of this, Fester does end up liking the Adamses, and eventually warms up to them, even teaching the kids about how to kill each other, showing them disgusting pictures of death and gore, and making a device for them to spew out blood in their class play. Seeing the family get together, being weird with one another, and having these little sadistic side gags always got a laugh out of me. My favorite part was when Morticia, after seeing Fester having trouble sleeping, guided him through the Adams family graveyard. As she passed by each grave, she described how each one died gruesomely, as if that were something to be proud of. The best one, however, was when she passed. Oh, darling Uncle Imar. Buried alive. That always made me laugh, and I really don't know why. That moan, man, it just it just gets to me every single time. Honestly, the house the Adams family lives in feels well lived in. There's so many mysteries and wonders within the house. So many trap doors, hidden rooms, cursed objects. It's like exploring a haunted mansion combined with a Dungeons and Dragons dungeon. I love it. While I've already said this, the family is possibly the best they've ever been portrayed, but I really just don't mean that in the sense that they look and act the part, but they're written like an actual loving, caring family. It's what I said previously, the family treats each other with respect and love. They don't care if one of them is a weirdo or psychotic, they love the imperfections that they have. The scene where they invite the more distant Adam's relatives was fantastic, each one being weirder than the last. But but not a single moment was there ever a scene where they hated or shunned someone out in the Adams family. It's honestly wholesome just how well they treat each other. It reminds me of my family and just how imperfect we are. We don't really get along, but we're family nonetheless. I don't know how many of you out there don't currently live with your parents, nor how close you are to them, but I can tell you that I am the black sheep of my family. I'm the weird one, I'm always the outcast, and yet, when I visited my mom and dad two years ago after not living with them for nearly three years, I really felt like I was still at home. Sure, I gained a few pounds and I had a lot more facial hair, but I was still their son. My mom even made me meatballs, one of my favorite dishes of hers, which is crazy because I've never really told her that, yet somehow, 
She knew that I loved it. If you could believe it, after I finished eating it, I told my mother that I loved her. It made her tear up. It was the first time I had told my mom that I loved her since maybe I was in elementary school. So probably 16 years ago, I want to say. It's not a common thing we say in our family. Yeah, we don't say I love you to one another. And when we do, it feels weird. But I really did appreciate what she made for me and the hospitality that she had given me alongside my father. Even though we never really talked that much, nor had we ever seen each other in a long time, nor have we ever seen eye to eye on many topics, she was still my mother. And my father is still my father. As is the rest of my family, is still my family. That's why I've watched this movie every single year. Because this is a Halloween movie about family. And yeah, I know, it's not really a Halloween film. It doesn't even take place during Halloween. Nor are there any pumpkins or anything of that sort. I mean, sure, it ends off on Halloween, so that kind of counts. But more than that, I feel this is a good Halloween film because, frankly, I think Halloween can be just about family and friends, as is something like Thanksgiving or Christmas. We always use Halloween as the perfect opportunity to get scared and dress up, hang out with friends, family, loved ones, carve a pumpkin with our mom and dad, brothers and sisters. We can go out trick-or-treating with them or with our friends, maybe even prank the neighbors or watch a horror flick with our loved ones. Halloween is of course about all the ghoulish things in the world, about the spooky stuff, about the traumas we endured, about all that nostalgic horror we faced. But Halloween is really, seriously, about unity. It's so much fun to hang with people during Halloween, just as it is fun to watch other people online having fun on YouTube or on Instagram during Halloween. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all connected by this wonderful, spooky little month. More than it is about Halloween, the Addams Family movie is about family and acceptance of, of who they are, no matter how long they've been gone, nor how much they've changed. There's even a scene where it seems like Fester has betrayed the Adams family, but Gomez and the rest of the family still believe in their heart that Fester still loves them, and doesn't really blame Fester, but blames the loan sharks more. It's really, and I know I've been using this word a lot, but seriously, I mean it, it's a wholesome, heartwarming movie. Even if there are creepy, weird things about it. That's why I view The Addams Family as the perfect Halloween film. Because it encapsulates everything about Halloween perfectly. It's got the creepy vibes, the dark tone, the ghoulish setting, the tributes to monster movies, and of course, the ever-loving, never-judging, always-caring, wonderful family values. Plus, if Die Hard can be considered a Christmas movie when it's not even about Christmas, why can't the Addams Family be about Halloween? There's one Halloween scene, and I think that's good enough, honestly. Speaking of which, happy Halloween, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this year's Traumathon. Special thanks again to Trey Watson for being a wonderful musician and having that wonderful intro music for this year's Traumathon. Thanks to Ducky3D for teaching me how to use Blender. And thanks to my wonderful girlfriend who has accepted me into her life and arms and has taught me that even a freak like me is worth loving. I'll see you all soon. Sorry if I didn't get to your suggestion. Traumathon will always be forever though. So long as spooky images or things or videos or movies or video games or whatever, as long as those things exist and they scare the ever-living shit out of all the kids of all generations, there will always be a Traumathon. Happy Halloween. Now go enjoy your candy, you little brats. I'll see y'all next year. I love y'all so much. Good night. Good night.